In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to migrate a WordPress site from a subdomain to the root domain to replace a live site with as little downtime as possible. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and migrate our subdomain to the live site. I'll see you there. Just to show you what we're working with, on the old site, all we have really is a blog listing page with all our blogs and a member area. That's all there is. On the new site, what we have is a lot more stuff going on. We've got a nicer homepage, still to be finished, but it's good enough for now. We've got a nice course listings page. We've got the about page, help page, coffee page, and the blog. The blog is all the same content as before. It's just designed differently, different images. Just looks a lot nicer. And this is gonna be the new site. And we're gonna move this site in place of the old one with as little downtime as possible. Now before I started, I took complete backups of both websites, manual backups. I've linked to a video down below to show you how to do that if you don't know how. And the way we're gonna do the actual transfer is using the duplicator plugin. But before we can do that, we have to do a little setup. So we have to go into the new site, the one that's redesigned, and get into the dashboard of that site because we need to install the plugin. And that plugin is the duplicator plugin which is gonna be used to transfer the site. So we head over to plugins and then click on add new and then type in duplicator. This is the one I use right here. I already have it installed so it shows an active grayed out button. You would click install and then activate. And then we have a new menu item that pops up on the left hand side called duplicator at the very bottom. Click on that to open the top level area. And this is where we see what are called packages. And packages are basically backups of the site that can be used for transferring. And we just click on create new to create a new package. And it's gonna give us some information about what it's gonna do. It's basically checking to see if the server passes certain requirements. It's gonna give us the name that the file is gonna be called. I just leave mine as it shows me because it's not that important. A couple other settings that you don't have to worry about, but you can go into these little drop downs and read more about them. But the default values for 99% of the cases work just fine. Then click on next and it's gonna scan our site and give us some more information. So when the scan's complete, it's gonna show us our server checks and they're all good. We have some size warnings. The package is gonna be 516 megabytes, which is over the recommended 150. I haven't found it to be an issue with this plugin, but apparently sometimes it is. So watch out for it. Uh, name checks. This is when it's found illegal characters in file names. And I have this one image, multiple versions created by WordPress of this image that has quotation marks in the file name. So big fail in adding a quotation mark to a file name, but it's all the same image that's being resized a bunch of times. So I don't have to worry about that one. I'll just clear that up later. Large files is also an issue. Files over three megabytes. So this one here is a, looks like a demos plugin for learn dash and then another learn dash one for six megabytes. And those aren't a big deal. So I'm just gonna keep those, not worry about it. And I'm going to close those down again. And we have some more checks that all turned out good. And because there are warnings, we have to click yes. I wanna continue in that checkbox and then click on build. And now it's gonna actually build the package that we're gonna to use to transfer the site to the live domain. This often takes a few minutes. So I'm just gonna pause it and get back to you when it's all done. The package has been built. We have two buttons for downloads. Just click on them to download, click the installer to download it and the archive to download it. Now while those download to our site, we're gonna create a new database on the live domain server. So if we head over to the cPanel for that, then we're gonna go into MySQL databases and I'm just gonna create a database with a bunch of random characters. There's no reason you have to have one that you can remember because you only use it once. So don't worry about it. Put the database name into a text editor for safekeeping because we're gonna need that in just a second. Then we create a user. I usually generate the password first because of LastPass because it'll you know, overwrite the password I enter and it's, it's a big pain sometimes. But either way, my process is password first, then random username, add my passwords in, click on create user, then copy the username and put it into our little file here. And the last step is connecting the user to the database, usually at the bottom of the page. 
The reason you do this is because you want the database to be able to connect to the website or vice versa. And we have to give the user privileges in that database to be able to do that. If you don't do that, you're going to get an error establishing database connection error. I've linked to a video down below as well to give you more information on that if you do get that error. But we've just connected the user to the database, giving all privileges. So we should be good to go. If we head back out to the main area, I'm going to go into the file manager. And now we're going to upload those files that Duplicator gave us, the installer file and that archive. So I'm going to go into the root of the existing website. Then I'm going to click on upload. And I currently have a one gigabyte limit on my account. And my archive happens to be 516, I think it was, megabytes. So we're well under the limit. If you are over the limit, your only option is to use either FTP or SSH to do the upload. And I've got some other videos coming where I show you how to do that. But for this example, we're under that limit, so it's not going to be a problem. So I'm just going to get my files. First, the installer. Just going to drag it into the dash box over here to upload it. That one goes really fast. Then the archive, which takes a bit longer because it's larger. We're going to wait for this to upload. And until then, I'm just going to pause this video. Now the file is uploaded. We can close this tab. And over here, we can reload. And we can see our files. So there's the archive we just uploaded. And the installer file is right here. So those are the two files we need to make this transfer happen. And now we get to the interesting part where we have to move a little faster. Up until now, nobody in the real world has really noticed what we're doing. But now we're going to take down the existing live website. And we're going to do that by putting it into a type of maintenance mode where we replace the home page with a coming soon message or under maintenance message or whatever you want it to say. So our home page currently is this. We refresh, we see it loads this page again. And what I've created, which you can get access to in the blog post I'll link to down below, is a new index file. This is just a PHP, or sorry, HTML file. I'm just gonna open it in the code editor. It's a super basic HTML file that says, we'll be back soon. We apologize for inconvenience. We give them an email. I feel like I gotta contact us immediately. And we give them a date and time when the site should be back online. And the way that looks is if we change this file name to index.html and then head back out here, refresh this page, this is how that message looks on the page. Like I said, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it works. And when you do these transfers, the site shouldn't be down for very long, a few minutes tops. Obviously this is taking a lot longer because I'm walking you through it. I wouldn't be talking the whole time I'm actually doing this. So it's taking a lot longer, but when you've done this once or twice and you're actually doing this process, it can take just a couple minutes to get this done. Just in case somebody lands here, needs help, they can email you. They know when the site's going back online, so they kind of have a guideline which makes people feel better. One thing to note is when we change that index file to be active, change it to HTML, the rest of the site still works. So if someone was on the blog post or browsing around the blog, they would still see the site as normal. Just the home page has been replaced. But now, we're going to take the whole site down. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call the folder old site. I'm going to select all the files. I'm going to deselect our index.html file, deselect the installer, deselect the archive, deselect the old site folder, and now drag and drop everything else into the old site folder. Now we only have these three files and the folder on the page. If we refresh here, we still have the index page, but now the rest of the site is gone too. People who are surfing the blog, if they try to reload the page or go to a different page, the blog won't be there anymore. So this is where it gets real and you gotta hurry. And you might be wondering why I put this into an old site folder and why we made a new database, why I just overwrite the existing database. The reason is we can revert back really quickly to the old site if we have to. We're going to create the new database. If everything goes well, we'll just delete the old one, which is easy to do. But if something goes sideways in the transfer, then we A, have our old database there, and B, we can just copy all the files back out of this folder into the root, and our site is back online in seconds. And then we go back and try to figure out what happened with the transfer, figure out why it went wrong, and then hopefully do better the next time. So now it's time to install this thing. I'm going to head over to our site forward slash installer.php and this is the duplicator file installer now we've got our archive here we got a green pass for having our archive that's good validation everything's been validated as good 
also good. We've got some options to go through if we want. I usually don't mess with these, defaults are fine. Some terms and conditions, yes, you've read them. Click on next. Now we just wait a little bit for this to deploy. And now we have some stuff to do. And step two is where we put our database credentials. Now the plugin, if you have the pro version, can actually create the credentials on its own through the cPanel option, but we don't have the pro version, also don't need the pro version. So we created those manually, and we're just gonna copy and paste them into place just by heading back into this text document here. I'm gonna copy the database name into here, and the username. and the password. And we have a warning here that says the action above that we selected, connect and remove all data is gonna delete the entire database. We're okay with that because it's empty. It's a brand new database. So again, create new only works if you have the pro version. And localhost is usually good enough for the host. I've encountered some servers that require an IP address, but the vast majority are localhost, so that's just fine. Options down here, again, find how they are. Change them if you're a pro. If you're not a pro, use the defaults because those are just fine. Click on test database down here, just to test the database. Everything's good. Now we can go ahead and click on next to go to step three. After we get a confirmation page again. Yes, it's all gravy. Go to page three. It may take another few minutes for this to work through. Now we're on step three. We have some settings here that are auto detected, the path, or sorry, the path, the URL, the title, those are just fine. There's some more options here. This is important stuff for replacing the content in the database. And the reason this is important is because some plugins are what's called serialized, which means they're associated with the old domain name or any domain name that they're installed on. You wanna make sure that domain name is replaced in the database, otherwise those plugins won't function properly until they're deleted and then reinstalled. So with this scan and update, you can get around that because this plugin will update those plugins automatically or those tables. It's gonna scan all of these tables for instances of old URLs and old paths and update them to the new ones. And then once it's all done, it's gonna activate all these plugins. And then you can choose to turn on these checkboxes if you need to, but you don't really need to. So you can just leave those as is. You don't have to mess with these ones down here either. All the defaults are usually just fine. Then click on next to go to step four. This also takes a few minutes sometimes, so just let that run. Now we're at step 404, which is the testing stage. It says here, log into the administrator section to finalize the setup. So click on site login. It'll take you to the login form. And you'll notice we're on a different domain now. We're not a different, well, in my case, it's the same domain, but a different subdomain. Before I was on learn.wplanlab.com. Now I'm on the main route. So that has gone correctly so far. Last pass is auto-filled. My login credentials, very handy. This will be the login details for the redesigned site if they're different. If they're the same, don't worry about it. And we just log in to see if everything works. So we've successfully logged in. We have a migration almost complete message up here saying we have to remove some installation files. We can click on this link to go there right now. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then it's going to delete the installer.php file and the archive. Actually, possibly not the archive. I have to do that manually. But definitely the installer file so it doesn't cause any problems. So we click on remove installation files right here, and then that will remove any files it deems necessary. And what we're also gonna do is head down to our settings and then permalinks, and we're not gonna make any changes to this page. We're just gonna scroll to the bottom and click on save changes, and that will rebuild our permalinks because sometimes transferring HT access files causes problems and rebuilding them this way fixes problems. So I always do that when I move, move a site. And if we go back into our file manager, actually first we'll go to the home page. So if we go to the home page, we see we still have this maintenance message. So this has got to come down and we've got to see what we've created. Hopefully we've transferred the site successfully. So here's the file manager, there's the old site, and this is all the files of the new site that we transferred over and that archive is still there. Let's see if I reload, it's still there. So we're gonna go ahead and delete this archive. We don't need it anymore. It's also on my hard drive, so I don't have to have it in two places. I'm going to keep this old site because we can always revert back. If we turn off the front page and it's broken, we can revert back to the old one. So I'm gonna change the file name of this index file back to gibberish. Moment of truth, go to the front, refresh this page. 
And this looks a lot like the site that we had initially. Check the domain name. We're on the root. And over here, go to the home page. We're in the subdomain here, and they look identical, which is exactly what we want. You want to click through all the links just to make sure those are all working properly. You definitely want to test stuff to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And everything appears to be fine. I'm not going to just bore you as I click through pages to make sure they work. But you just click through them. If they work, they work. It's fine. Awesome side note is we have our SSL certificate applied to the root domain that wasn't applied to the subdomain. But it's on the root and it's automatically applied to our site transfer which is pretty fantastic. And one more fun note. This is really quick. So in here we were changing the index file. So we just had index.html and that replaced our homepage. I've seen websites that were hacked by a hacker and all they did was upload their own index.html file. They didn't do anything else. So they replaced the homepage with their hacktivist message and then to clean it up, all you had to do was go in, go to the index.html file, click delete, and the hack was cleaned up. And then, of course, you want to change your passwords and all that stuff, too. That was actually one of the easiest hacks I've ever cleaned up in my life. So it's just one file. Super simple. Anyway, that's just a nice side note. And we're all done migrating the site. That's how we migrate from a subdomain to the live site. If you have any questions or run into any problems, please leave a comment down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe. Then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.